three photographers from three different time zones, all connected by night photography and all shooting with the Pentax K1. We are the Night Taxians. I just want to remind everybody that we've got two night photography workshops coming up and we would love you to come to one or both. Uh, most importantly and most quickly is the Nelson Ghost Town Night Photography Workshop on May 4th, 5th, and 6th. And uh, that's only, that we're within like 90 days of that. Now I've got two spaces left. It's a long exposure, low ISO, moonlight shooting. Yes, you can do night photography with moonlight. You just get a different effect and it's a lot of fun. Ken is going to be co-hosting with me. Nelson is about an hour outside of Las Vegas. We've got three great nights in there. We've got the weather is consistently great. There's old buildings and cars and gas pumps and planes. I'll put the link in the description below. I hope you can join us. And then also we have Old Car City, which is a place way down, well, way down for me, <laughs> from Massachusetts, uh, in it outside of Atlanta, Georgia, in a town called White, Georgia. It's about an hour away. And it's 4,000 old American-made cars hanging out in the middle of the woods. Trees are growing through the trunks of the cars. Basically, you got trunks going through trunks. Sounds like a wormhole should open up or something. Um, trunks going, uh, tree trunks going through engine compartments. Uh, it's it's just the weirdest place you've ever seen. And the owner has granted us access October 25th, 6th, 7th, and 8th. Yeah, this uh, is a rare opportunity. This is a really special place. And then I'm I'm sorry. Go ahead and uh, tell about the 29th. No, I was just <laughs> I, just to piggyback off of what you just said. You, you'll never shoot everything in there in five workshops. There's nope. so much in there. In fact, unless you have a buddy system when you walk into that place, and don't worry, we'll know where you are because we, we're going to track you. But you <laughs> won't see anybody. You'll just go off into the woods and you, mm. you have your own space. So if you're looking for a nice solitary experience in a safe environment with a lot of cool stuff under moonlight. That's going to be the place. And then on the 29th, we're doing a bonus location of the school bus graveyard, which is exactly mm -hmm. what it sounds like. So if you like old buses, whether it's school buses or old vans or um, there's some coach buses in there. Yeah. Uh, trucks, some vehicles as well. And um, yeah, lots of lots of art. Yeah. So definitely consider joining us for that. All the links are going to be underneath this video right there for you to check out. You can always send us a message through YouTube here or send me a email off my website. And I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. We thought we'd talk a little bit about how we managed to stabilize our incredibly heavy Pentax K1s because I got it. I got to say the K1 with the 15 to 30 is probably the heaviest kit that I've, I've ever shot with. Um, it's, yeah. It's really heavy. I mean, um, hauling that around is a workout. And if, you, if yeah. you're going to add a tripod to it, which I hope <laughs> exactly. you are for night photography, you got to make some really smart decisions or you're going to be getting a really amazing muscle workout. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to kick it off to Ken specifically because I really want to hear more about his tripod now that I've, I've been able to lift it up and amazed by the weight. Okay, well, I've got all sorts of things to say about tripods because, yeah. uh, well, first of all, I just love tripods, but... Like, I feel like um, you're juggling cost, weight, and stability, you know, and it's always those three things. And it's hard to get all three of them together um, because, like, I mean, for instance, if you want a cheap tripod that doesn't weigh too much, well, is it going to be stable? If you want a cheap tripod that's super sturdy and takes high exposures and high winds, sure, but it might be really heavy. Or if you want something that's really sturdy and lightweight, well, that's going to cost you. So, I mean, I mean, it's it's the sort of juggling act. So um, I prefer personally for me this, and remember, this is for night photography. I prefer carbon fiber because it's lightweight and as a bonus, it's not as cold when you hold it. So it's not like those aluminum tripods where your hand just almost freezes when when you hold it. And I prefer no columns, and no hooks. And um, I don't use them at all. I don't have them on my tripods. And in my opinion, telescoping center columns introduce instability and invite additional vibrations, um, you know, and, and um, that increases the, uh, the more you raise them. And uh, I mean, they have their uses, of course, but, 
you know, you, you really do introduce instability. And the reason why I don't like center hooks, which are fairly popular among people, is that I find that if you hook something to it, such as a camera bag, um, it sways when, when there's wind, which, which makes me rather concerned and introduces the possibility for, for vibration. I always lose my center hooks. They never stay in, oh. the, in the tripod. <laughs> like a month later, I'll think, I thought I had a center hook on this. Oh, and, interesting. Yeah, I know. I know I did. And then it just pops out. Uh, so I don't understand where they go. Uh, I probably okay. have left a trail of hooks across Cape Cod. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, I, I agree. I don't use the center hooks for the same reason you mentioned. And uh, the center column thing, uh, I think it's you're, you're right. There's obviously use for those things. But when it comes to long exposure photography where you need the stability, I think that's one of the worst things you can do is take the the lazy way out of raising up your, your tripod. Cause people don't always want to unclamp three different legs and you right. know, do all that. It is a shorter amount of time just to use that center column, but um, just so much stuff can go wrong. So, um, and it adds to the weight. And if you're not going to use it, what's the point of having it? Yeah. But I mean, what you're trying to do is you're trying to create a pyramid. And so when you add the center column, it, it pokes up over the pyramid and that's the part it, that's in part what introduces instability. Plus it's usually a, a typically a thinner column than your legs. So, so yeah, you, you have far more chance for, for, uh, vibrations and whatnot. And especially, uh, some of the places, uh, in the Mojave desert where, where I'm, photographing they're really high wind areas so you just want to avoid that whenever possible what do you what do you use for your travel tripod and i'm assuming that you have m multiple tripods for different scenarios or maybe trips right yeah so i usually bring if, if it's a car trip i bring both tripods uh but what i consider my travel tripod and it's not really a travel tripod it's not small enough to be really considered one, but that's what I use anyway. So that's a Faisal, F-E-I-S-O-L, Faisal CT3342. And so this is what most people would consider a normal tripod. It has a load capacity of, believe it or not, 55 pounds, which is a lot. Wow. And um, it folds up to 23.2 inches. So again, not super small, but I can still fit it in my pack. Um, it weighs two and a half pounds, so not not a giant heavyweight. And that's really something that, you know, you have two and a half pounds, yet it holds 55. Um, so uh, this holds the Pentax K1 with the 15 to 30. Doesn't break a sweat. No problem whatsoever. And um, what I use uh, mounted to this is an Acrotec GPS ball head. And I love Acrotec because they're really lightweight, but they're really strong. And I can't remember what the load capacity of the Acrotec is, but it's really, it's, it's really quite high. So it's always going to be way more than what you're typically going to use. You'd have to be yeah. putting four more Pentax K1s on there with 15, 30 <laughs> lenses. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ideally you want your tripod and ball head, uh, to, to be able to, hold approximately three times what you're actually going to put on there. And that's considered stable by a lot of tripod experts. Faisal tripods to me look like they have really, um, really wide um, legs. Just yeah. the circumference of the legs. So it was really yeah. misleading when I went over. I can't remember why I was picking up the tripod for you, but I mm -hmm. thought either I had gained superhuman strength or... <laughs> half the tripod fell away because I couldn't get over how light it was. I, I have a tripod that I travel with. That's my travel tripod and it weighs a pound and a half more than that. It's, it's, that's quite a bit, quite a bit of a difference. So I, I was amazed, which got me looking for another tripod. So that's your travel one. What's your, you know, main one for the larger tripod. What I'm using is a Faisal CT3372. This has a load capacity of 66 pounds. So that's quite a lot. And this is a larger tripod than what most people use. So because I photograph in places that have really, really strong gusts of wind, um, this is absolutely essential. And it's held up to gale force winds in the Owens Valley before. And I was ab able to do star trails with it, um, even though it was perched precariously on several rocks. I mean, this thing is just, <laughs> it's just rock solid. I mean, you get 
much, much more stable than this. And you're talking about like cementing uh, a pole to the ground. <laughs> so, nice. um, yeah. So this folds down to 24.8 inches, which is considering how large the tripod is and how beefy it is. That's not bad. It's 3.9 pounds. And like I said, again, it, it has a load capacity of 66 pounds, but I, I feel like it could hold more than that. Um, it's really strong. So, and attached to that, again, I, I tend to overdo things. So I have a really right stuff BH55, which is their big and giant beefy um, ball head. And I believe that has a load capacity of 55 pounds, I think. Okay. Well, as the name implies, BH55. So yeah, I think that's what it is. So. Mike, you sent me a couple of pictures of uh, tripods that you have, and I'm going to put up a picture of that video looking tripod that I think you said you started off on. Is it the oh, silvery yeah. one? Bellbon. Yeah. yeah, I think we all had one of the, well, I, I don't want to speak for Ken, but I know I had one of those way back yeah. in the day. I did. You did? Awesome. Yeah. 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 I Mine's a silver uh silver and black very heavy great for high winds more of a video tripod single you know lever bar thing coming out of it my primary tripod is a gitzo i don't remember uh i don't remember the number but it's a gitzo explorer mm. which the primary difference uh is that uh like ken not liking uh the center column mm -hmm. it has a column but it's a offset column. And primarily I like that because if I were to say, wanna shoot inside, say inside a car, I can raise it up and then lean it way over. That's fantastic. Uh, I've had it ups, all, nearly upside down before. So if I wanted to shoot from a very mm -hmm. low vantage point, I can essentially flip it upside down and shoot up. Wow. Uh, no, that's uh, that's one of the great reasons. Up. That's one of the great reasons to have a center column. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And the way this is designed is uh, you can just raise the column up and then it will then come over. So you don't actually have to take it all the way out and flip it upside down. And yeah, you, that's utterly fantastic. You don't have any problems with uh, um, center of gravity issues or any sort of uh, like weird shake? It, it stays nice and steady for your long exposures? It stays pretty steady. I haven't really had much of a problem, but unlike Ken's Faisal, the thing weighs a ton. <laughs> uh, it's a, instead of being a carbon fiber, it's a magnesium tripod. So mm -hmm. uh just the tripod itself is weighs a ton and then you strap a ball head on top of it and <laughs> just added weight to it. So by the time you get the K one on top of it, uh, it's practically wanting to sink into the <laughs> when it's sitting on concrete. <laughs> it's quickly traveling towards the center of the earth. It is. Yeah. You know, what, though, there's really something to be said for heavy tripods though. I don't think they're necessarily bad because they, uh, the weight itself introduces stability and you know there's there is really something to be said for that because uh, uh a two and a half pound um tripod you know as well engineered as it is if there's a horrible wind or something like that it's more it's still light yeah so yeah and that's the worst thing about it is it, it's very heavy to yeah. carry around which is kind yeah. of a uh, Gitzo makes great stuff too. So, yeah, uh, the one I'm using now is my second one. Uh, mm -hmm. The first one, both of them, I've bought used. Uh, the first one I got, I've worn out, and so I found another one on eBay and bought it. Fantastic. Did you save the old one for parts? Absolutely. Yeah. Good idea. Yep. Yep. I've cannibalized a few myself until there's no parts left yeah. to have. And then the, the rest of it goes in the trash, you know? Yep. Yeah. Are there any other tripods that you're, you're shooting with or something you shot with before uh, that you liked? I, I have, uh, when I travel, I have, uh, I should back up. So if I have to fly, 
I have a, I got a travel tripod that is a Zoomy, Zomi, something like that. It's like uh, Z-O-M-E-I or something, yeah. right? Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Uh, it's pretty small. It's fairly light, but primarily uh, I wanted something that was pretty small so that I could strap it onto the bottom of my camera bag and uh, kind of, like, not that I can but kind of fit in the tsa's size requirements uh it's just about the same width as my uh as my bag so uh, i don't have something else hanging off yeah. the side or uh, it's all kind of streamlined so to speak so when i get on a plane i can just slide it right up in the overhead and it's there nice and attached okay. to the back so how long have you had that one for? Uh, I just got that one maybe two, three years ago, I think. Oh, okay. Mm. I, I don't you're, think I've had it for too terrible long. You only use it for when you're going on a flight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, so it'll probably like last to have a, a heavier long time. one, but, um, you know, it seems pretty stable and, it, um, uh, it, it it's a, a nice size for traveling. Mm -hmm. Are you also using uh, like a, a some sort of ball head setup? Uh, yeah, the Zomi had its own ball head on it. Mm -hmm. It's actually, I think it's, I think that ball head's rated for thirty or forty pounds. Mm -hmm. That's a it's lot. not very big, uh, but it, it, I when I bought it, I was looking for the one that had the beefiest ball head attached to it. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. it's never had a problem holding the K1. That's a good call. That's that's an impressive load capacity for a for a small little travel tripod. Yeah, yeah. It's I, I'm really happy with it. Um, so far, I've you know I'm sure I'll break it or wear it out at some point before long. But it happens. Yeah, but you it does. you probably didn't pay that much for it, right? Some of these. Uh... No third yeah. party or whatever you want to call it tripods that are coming out are they're pretty good. It's not like 10 years ago where you got sort of a, a knockoff, no. you know, or a lesser brand or just a cheap one yeah. and it would just it's true. melt, you know, 10, 10 years ago, 10 years ago, there weren't, it, it was, it was, um, the, the field of tripods was much less. So, you know, I feel like I got probably the best thing I did at the time, but there's, there's a lot of, uh, really great choices now that are probably less expensive. Oh yeah, absolutely. And what about on, on your main tripod, Mike, is that a ball head also? Uh, yeah, it's, I have a Arca Swiss on it. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Everybody, everybody I know is using ball head systems. Yeah. You know, yeah. To, there's, I was going to say, not yeah, to say I that's better than I've, one or the other, but. Yeah, I've met um, one or two people who use um, uh, video style uh, heads, uh, the ones with the, the, the large handle or lever. Mm, right. And um, I had one of those on the first tripod that I used, which is my dad's uh, Sears tripod from the 1970s. And, <laughs> well, I kept Sears. ramming... I kept ramming my teeth into it at night because I couldn't see it. You know, it's black. And so I would go to look in the camera and, you know, go, bang. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> so camera I quickly, defending itself. Yeah. I quickly yeah. determined that that might not be the way to go for me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you only have so many teeth. Yeah. So Tim, what do you use? I have, uh, right now I'm, I'm just trying out this brand new tripod that I just got. Thanks to, thanks to you actually, Ken, because I got thinking about <laughs> carbon fiber, 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 fiber. And uh, I had not done anything with carbon fiber. I started off with a Slick Pro 700 DX, which I still have. And it's probably 13, 14 years old now. Fantastic tripod, super heavy tripod, but it is, it is stable. We have high winds out here on the national seashore quite a bit. I never mm. worry about it. Has the flip locks. We didn't talk mm -hmm. too much about flip locks versus the, the twisties. I've always been a huge fan of flip locks myself because I feel like they're, yeah. For me, they're faster to deploy. Um, mm -hmm. So I've always tried to gravitate towards tripods with the, the flips. But that thing, that Slick 700, is not a travel tripod at all. I have mm. 
rammed it into suitcases that I would ch- uh, check at the airport, but they never mm-hmm. fit in the, you know, the carry ons just not Mm-mm. doesn't collapse down center column. You know, it's, it's, I think it's really for people who are going to be using like really long lenses or they just need super stability and, and, you know, windy environments, but uh, it's aluminum. I've never had a problem with it. Nothing's ever broken on it. Even the finish still looks good on it. I'd, I'd recommend it to anybody. If you're not going to, you know, hike the Alps and you don't need to, <laughs> you know, make that giant trip. It's it's totally fine, and I would I would still tell people to get that. It's still a great price. You mentioned earlier the the cost of price, uh, the or tripods versus weight, and it seems like the lighter the tripod, you know, the higher the quality. Of course, the the more expensive it gets, but the heavier the tripod, there's a sort of a cheaper point, and that those legs end up being around ninety nine dollars. I think yeah. they're still around ninety nine dollars. Yeah. So worth it. Then I went to the Benro Adventure Series One, aluminum and magnesium, and that was my travel tripod. And for me, because it was lighter, I just felt like this is it. This is my travel tripod. Now we're down to four pounds instead of maybe six. But right. again, when you shave two pounds off of your kit, it feels like a big difference. Oh, I yeah. used that one for a couple of years, and uh, I over tightened one of the. Um, one of the flip locks and I broke it. So yeah. I ended up just ordering another tripod. I thought, okay, there's some other things I shoot in a very salty, sandy environment. And I'm always worried that things are going to start rusting and, and they do now I'm shooting or I'm trying out Leo photo, which was a company I hadn't heard about until maybe a year ago. And right. they seem to be a lower price competitor to a lot of the major carbon fiber tripods out there. Uh, and, but they're getting great reviews. There's right. tons of reviews on these that are all really super positive. Uh, more people seem to buy them for shooting. And I don't mean with a camera. I mean with like guns or like rifles. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Or scope use. You know, if you're out doing spotting mm-hmm. and you mm-hmm. want to bring a, you know, a nice scope, that's what people are doing. But there are photographers out there using it. And the key for me was I found one. That weighed about 2.8 pounds, and it's out of a series that they have called the Poseidon series. They claim it's uh, weather-proof, waterproof, it's designed to be put in water, and it's mm. also designed, and this was the thing that I thought was really cool, it's designed to not allow sand, grains of sand, to go up into the legs as you collapse them. It's supposed to block that entirely. And for me, that's huge because when I'm out doing the tours and the workshops or doing my own shooting and I go to collapse those legs, I can hear that, I can hear that grinding sound in the bend row, you know? Yeah. <laughs> you know, and yeah. then the next time you pull the tripod legs out, you get some grains of sand and then you also see the scratches on the legs. Yeah. So yeah. this, this tripod is blue and it's got the twists. I couldn't get it with the flips, but I was willing to overlook that because of that feature. And I, I know it is weather tight there because it's the only tripod I've ever owned where when I collapse the legs, I mm-hmm. can hear the air shooting out the other side. Oh, uh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's a good sign. Yeah. For wow. ceiling. Yeah. yeah. It fits no problem in my um, in my uh, wandered duffel. Right. Yeah. Which you currently also have. Yes, I do. And that was a concern that I had. So I think 21, 22 is, in my mind, the max that I would consider for a travel tripod based on how I want to pack it. Yeah, I would I would agree with that. That's sort of the dividing line. And that's why the, the Faisal is not a true travel tripod. And, it, you know, to be fair, they don't, they don't market it as a travel tripod. It's just what I use for a travel tripod. But that yeah. one folds down to, um, I think it was 23.2 inches. So that's still pretty good. I always have to take the ball head off anyway, just to be safe. Yeah, I do that too. But yeah, that Leo photo sounds great. I paid two twenty nine, I think, for that tripod. Okay, which Which is I didn't think um, was bad at all. They have a ten year warranty. What's that? Yeah, did it come with a ball head also? It didn't come with a ball head. Um, I picked up um a trav a travel ball head. I think it was art archite arcite a r c i t e. Um, I'll throw a picture of it up there. Uh, okay. It's a little bit lighter than the one I was using. I had an Oban. I still have it. An Oban ball head, which which I love, but it seems like it's starting to get loose and it doesn't look like it's something I can tighten. And so 
I think I've probably worn it down. I've had it since 2016. It's been the ball head I've used on every tripod. I just keep moving it around. Um, mm -hmm. So it is what it is. But uh, they do sell a kit that comes with, they have their own ball heads, but um, I didn't necessarily want the one that they were offering. So I just ordered it without. We should do also like a one-year follow-up uh, to this one. You finally get it out on the beach and coastal areas and see what you think of it then. Oh yeah, that's a great idea because if, if it's going to fail or if it's going to start to age or wear down, I'm going to be the one to do it. <laughs> right. That's <laughs> right. All of that. <laughs> yeah. How much oh, do yeah. you guys think uh, the combination of the 15 to 30 attached to a Pentax K1 is? I'm guessing it's either six or six and a half pounds, something like that. I don't know. It feels heavy. Oh, it does. Yeah. Fair. You know, it, 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 it at 10 o'clock at night, I'd say six or seven pounds. At three in the morning, I'd say 40 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> Possibly more. Well, hopefully people found that helpful. There's a lot of tripods out there. I'm sure somebody's watching this right now thinking, you know, what they got is, is great and... Yeah, and if That's you great. have a favorite tripod, put it in the comments. Yeah, we're always on the lookout for more cool, you know, feedback on that sort of stuff. And there might be a brand out there that we're not aware of that you would you would recommend. I know there's a lot of Pentax shooters that, you know, get the K1 because I'm reading the comments on the channel here about people. Oh, I just got a K1. I got a K1. You know, that would be very interested to hear what your experience would be on that. Yeah. 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 Let us know. We yeah. always need to get another tripod for some reason. So, oh, absolutely. <laughs> Probably between the, the three of us, we have at least eight tripods in play. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I have a Robus tripod too, which is fantastic, but it's too large to take in the field. But it's it's a really beautifully machined tripod. So, yeah. What, so, I own four tripods. What do you total. use the Robus for? Or do you um, not? I don't really, to be honest. Really? I use it. Um, I use it in, in the house, uh, mostly, if, um, if I'm setting up for macro or things like that, which is total overkill, but, um, sometimes I shouldn't say that though, because sometimes with the, uh, macro I'm, you know, I'm having to lean the tripod forward with a pretty heavy camera. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, that extra stability is pretty nice cause I don't have something as flexible as, um, Mike's center column. So. So yeah, actually, I should I shouldn't say that. I think the Robus does come in handy for that. Well, better to have it ne not need it than need it and not have it. You can always find a use for anything that you buy. That's how I convince myself to buy things. Yeah, <laughs> I don't need another one of these, but maybe I do. Mm -hmm.